Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Christy and I'm going to be attending Carnegie Mellon University this upcoming fall. So I'm assuming if you clicked on this video, you're probably wondering how to get into the CMU. So I'm just going to be sharing some of my stats, my extracurriculars, and some basic tips I have about essays. Yeah, so let's get to it. Why is half my eyebrow gone? Is this lighting? What? Okay, so let's start off with stats. I have in front of me my computer and I'm just going to be looking at it because sometimes I forget what my stats are. <laughs> so my school does unweighted GPAs and I have a 3.88 weighted. I think that's about a 4.2. Um, I didn't take the SAT. I took the ACT and I got a 35. Um, my sub scores were a 35 in English, 36 in math, 34 in reading, 35 in science, and a 10 on the writing portion. I took two SAT2 tests, one in math and one in chem. Um, for the math one, I got 800, and for the chem, I got 640. Yes, that is very low, but I'll get into it later on in the video why that's okay for my major. Um, I took three AP tests, one my sophomore year for Calc AB, I got a four, uh, two my junior year, Chinese, I got a five, and then in chem, I got a three. Again, low, but I'll get to it as to why that's okay. So the reason I'm saying that my lower chem scores are okay is because I'm going to be a business major. As a business major, it doesn't really matter that much how well I do in chem because it's not a required course. So I think that's why it didn't make that big of an impact to my overall application. Okay, so some advice for stats. Um, for me, I waited until the really end of junior year kind of to take the ACT and my two SAT2 tests. And because of that, I didn't really have the chance to retake my SAT2 test because I didn't want to push it into a senior year. So I would suggest you to take it like as early as you can, maybe in the beginning of junior year, just in case you need to retake it. I also think that if you try to aim for a higher GPA instead of harder courses, it does have a greater impact to your application. And then basically what I mean by that is that if you know that you can take the hard classes and still get a 4.0, then yes, go take it. But if you pack your schedule with um, really hard classes and you know that you're going to get straight Bs or even some Cs, you might want to try to aim for taking easier classes and still getting those As. Okay, so now I'm going to be talking about my extracurriculars. So CMU uses the Common App, and the Common App only allows you to put 10 activities plus 5 awards, so I'm just going to be talking about those. So to start off, I did FBLA my four years of high school. I became an officer my junior year. I also did volleyball my four years of high school. I was captain on my JV team, and I won first team all week two years in a row. Uh, I was in National Chinese Honor Society for three years, and I became the vice president my senior year. And during the summer between sophomore and junior year, I volunteered at the Boys and Girls Club of the Peninsula. Um, there, I basically taught first graders some basic concepts in math, English, reading, all that. Um, I was also a part of ASB. For us, ASB is basically our leadership class. My junior year, I was the campus link commissioner. And basically what we did was we connected the school and the community through, through events like Stomp Out Bullying Month, where we ran activities to promote um, ending bullying, and I also ran two blood drives. My senior year, I became the ASB clubs commissioner. Um, for clubs, it's more self-explanatory. It's basically just looking over the clubs on campus. For some of the jobs I held these past four years is I taught art at my old art school my freshman year for about four months. It wasn't that long. And then I also coached volleyball. That one was way longer. Um, one last club that I was part of is the Global Teammate Program. I wouldn't necessarily call it a club. It was more like, I'm not sure what you would call it actually, but basically we were matched with ELD students and we would have to hang out with them at lunch or bring them around campus, bring them to some rally, a sports game to get them more immersed into, I guess, American culture. So for the last two activities I put on the Common App, I actually put two summer programs I attended. Uh, the first one is UC Berkeley Business Academy for Youth, and the second one was at USC. It wasn't exactly a program, it was more of a class, so the class was called Exploring Entrepreneurship. And then for both of these summer programs, basically we were assigned a group, and then with that group we would have to make a business idea and present it to potential investors. At the Berkeley program, my team won second place. Uh, the one for USC wasn't graded, but we did get I guess a grade for our participation in class, the homework we did, our tests and all that, and I did end up with an A. So for my awards, um, as I mentioned earlier, I was awarded 
top 10 league players for volleyball. I also received the Gold Presidents Volunteer Service Award. I got that from volunteering more than 100 hours before I turned 16. I also received third place at one of FBLA's Bay Section conferences for sales presentation. Uh, what I did for that competition was basically I recorded a video of myself selling a product. I also received the Golden Bear Award. This was given to me at the UC Berkeley summer program that I attended. Uh, basically, this award was given to four people in my group. So Berkeley has four core principles that they strongly believe in at Haas. And the students, the teachers, the TAs had to kind of pick one student who demonstrated each of those four different aspects. And then the award I won was Confidence Without Attitude. And I am also an AP Scholar. My advice for extracurriculars is choose something to do for a long time because if you're doing it for a long time, it really shows how passionate you are about that specific thing and how dedicated you are to it. For me, I didn't really do anything for four years except volleyball and FBLA and I definitely regret not diving into one or two different clubs and really, really getting deep into it. And also choose your extracurriculars based on what you want to major in or what you are extremely passionate about because that definitely shows schools that you really do want to pursue that specific career. Okay, so now on to essays. So for CMU, you had to submit the Common App and three supplement essays. I'm not going to be reading exactly what I wrote, but I will be giving a brief overview of the topic I chose to write about. So for my Common App, what I talked about was when I first attended the USC summer program, I was feeling really out of place. But through experiences like meeting new people, the events I attended, the new things I learned, I developed a new home that wasn't actually at my house or like my home technically. And how I know that in college, I'll find my home away from home. So I basically talked about that. For my CMU essays, I'm going to be reading the prompt and then talking about the topic that I chose to write about. So to start off, the first prompt is, most students choose their intended major or area of study based on a passion or inspiration that's developed over time. What passion or inspiration led you to choose this area of study? So as I mentioned before, I am majoring in business. And what I talked about was I started selling stuffed animals on Instagram. And even though that business wasn't intended to make me profits, it was more intended to just get rid of all the stuffed animals I have because I have way too many. But it did give me real life experience on dealing with customers, packaging, and all of that good stuff that goes with business. So that's what I wrote about for my first essay. So for CMU's second supplement prompt, the prompt was, many students pursue college for a specific degree, career opportunity, or personal goal. Whichever it may be, learning will be critical to achieve your ultimate goal. As you think ahead to the process of learning during your college years, how will you define a successful college experience? So what I wrote about in this essay was, during my senior year, I started coloring the days of my calendar either green, red, or orange, and how I'll bring those colors with me to college. So what a green day represents is I either followed my intellectual curiosity, I sat next to someone who I saw was alone during lunch, I branched out of my comfort zone, I took a risk to grow, whereas a red or orange day would be me choosing a decision because I'm scared or just not going out of my comfort zone. For the last supplement prompt for a CMU, the question was, consider your application as a whole. What do you personally want to emphasize about your application for the admissions committee's consideration? Highlight something that's important to you or something you haven't had the chance to share yet. So this prompt was definitely more open-ended. For this essay, I talked about how when I was a freshman, I had severe stage fright. Whenever I would go up for presentations or even during Socratic seminars, I would shake, my voice would shake, my body would shake, and I would feel like the entire audience could tell how nervous I was. During my sophomore year, I decided to do the homecoming skit. Through practice with that and then practicing to myself in the mirror, I gradually became more confident in my public speaking. And basically what that essay showed about me was that I'm able to conquer my own fears through practice and how I'm able to grow as an individual. My first piece of advice for essays is that you need to love your essays. For me, I applied to 20 schools and out of those 20, I liked all my essays, but I didn't love a few of them. And those were the schools that I didn't get into. And I feel like that's because the admissions team can see how much love and effort you put into their essays and how that relates to how much you truly want to go to their school. Another piece of advice is to show your characteristics and your personality through your essays because the admissions team can easily see what you've done through your activities list, but they can't tell who you are as a person. 
in order for them to accept you, they need to know that you're going to fit in with the community of students at that specific school. And the only way to do that is to express who you are through your essays. The last piece of advice is that you should definitely visit the schools that you want to attend. For me, before the application season, I had only been to Berkeley and USC, and while I was there, I got a really good feel of what the community is like, what the dorms are like, what the food is like, how the professors there are, and it made writing about why I wanted to go to those schools so much easier because I had an idea of what the schools did. Whereas for the other schools which I did not visit, it was a little harder because I could only view the schools based on what I saw online or based on other YouTube videos. So definitely visit the schools that you want to attend. Started. And of course, if you don't get into a tier 1 school, it does not mean that you're not good enough. Acceptances and rejections do not define who you are as a person, or what you're worth, or how well you're going to do, because every single person brings something unique to the table. Just because someone doesn't attend a tier 1 school, it doesn't define how successful they will become in the future. Some people end up attending schools that they never would have thought they would have attended and end up loving there and thriving and doing their best and coming out and having such a successful future and career. So if you don't get into your top choice, it doesn't mean that you're not going to be successful or that you're not good enough. Remember when you're choosing the schools to apply to. Don't just choose a random school or take the top 20 schools and apply to the top 20. Choose schools where you're going to love the community, where you're going to like the weather, you're going to like whether it's immersed in the city or not, you're going to like the dorms, all that stuff because that contributes to how well you're going to do at that specific school. And that's the end of today's video. If you guys have any more questions or comments, comment them down below and I'll reply to them. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Yeah, so I'll see you guys next time. Bye!